it's like completely relearning how to interpret things and how to decide what they are. So the experience is exhilarating and terrifying all at the same time. Scott Nixon is starting to see things differently, one step at a time. I was born with a uh, eye condition called retinitis pigmentosa and by the age of 21, I was declared totally blind. He's one of four blind Australians who are trialling a bionic eye that's helping them to see more of the world. The ability to walk down the street and see all these different objects flashing in my field of view and everything is, is fascinating, it's remarkable. The first thing to understand about the device is that it doesn't restore quote unquote sight. Uh, what it does is generate small bursts of light. Scientists at the Centre for Eye Research and the company Bionic Vision Technologies are developing the glasses. No, it's not going out. There we go. Well done. Without the glasses on, I really couldn't tell you anything. I mean, I can't see you sitting across the, uh, the space here from me. I can't see my own cane in front of my face. With the device, things do improve by, I'd say, a good 50 to 60%. The glasses are made of plastic and aluminium with about two hours of battery life. They work in conjunction with a chip surgically placed under the skull and behind the eye. It's been in development for 10 years to help people who are blind from retinitis pigmentosa. That's around 9,000 Australians. What that disease does, or that genetic condition does, it destroys the photoreceptors and receptors in the back of uh, uh, the eye, which in, in, in all of us, it turns light into vision. So what our system does is uh, basically bypasses those photoreceptors that have been destroyed. I describe learning how to use this device and interpreting the flashes of light as trying to learn an entirely new language. With advances in technology, engineering and medicine, bionic body parts have come a long way in recent years. What was once the stuff of science fiction is now one step closer to reality. And the next frontier is bionic devices that operate inside the brain. That's something the world's richest man, Elon Musk, is delving into with his company Neuralink. It's developing a brain microchip that they hope will let humans control a computer with their thoughts. It's known as a brain-machine interface. Technologies that interact with the nervous system, they store information, a concern is that that might lead to some forms of manipulation. Uh, there's risks of, um, of hacking and, and that sort of thing. Right, great. Thanks. Dr Alan McKay is studying the ethical and legal questions posed by neurotechnology. As we sort of become more closely connected to computers and to machines and to AI, then whoever produces these devices and stores the data, they've got more information about us, which might be made, used in ways that we don't want. I enjoy cooking. I've always enjoyed cooking. I've cooked since I was 14. But I guess it's part of who I am. John Davey lost all four of his limbs after contracting meningococcal and getting septicemia four years ago. Well, it was an interesting birthday week. I turned 55 on Monday, and on Saturday I was in induced coma. You can't imagine not having arms and legs, but the reality is you don't have them. When his arms were amputated, doctors at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne surgically realigned his severed nerve endings so they match up with sensors on two custom-made robotic arms. They're essentially controlled by his thoughts. I control the hands by thinking about the grip or the movement I want to make. S same as people, you know, that have hands, but you do it subconsciously. And the brain says, oh, OK, sends the nerves the signal and the arms, hopefully, uh, correspond with the movement I want to make. 
John's robotic arms are made of resin and rubber and other materials with about a day of battery life. They attach like a sleeve on the arm so can't carry anything too heavy, like a kettle full of water. Only three people in Australia have the same device. They cost around $160,000 but are funded by the NDIS. So it's basically a process whereby, as I explained, I've got nerves. Inside here are pickups that pick up the signal that I've got. Oh, these little silver yeah. buttons. Yeah. And um, if I put it on right and get everything going, I'll show you. To pick up something like this, I'd use the power grip. To remove the paper off the table. Pinch. If I was to shake your hand. He says the technology is advancing every year and the future is bright. There's an amazing trial going on at the moment and they're looking at putting sensors in my fingers. I could probably do anything I want to do with my new hands. How do I do it might be differently. I need to adapt in that way. But you know, the world is my oyster. Yeah.